Introducing the Zero Point Generator. Hi, my name is Eurus. I'm an electrical and electronics engineer with over 50 years experience, mostly in power generation, telecommunications and IT. I've always been very interested in cheap energy production, especially from the so-called zero point energy. If you're familiar with quantum mechanics, you'll be aware that according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, space is awash in a sea of electromagnetic fluctuations or energy. Now, previously, this energy has been inaccessible, but now I have done just that. With this zero point generator, I'm now able to tap into this previously untappable source of power. Space, time, energy and matter were all created at the Big Bang. Space is required to contain everything within the universe. If there was no space, there would be no energy and no universe. Before the Big Bang, there was absolutely nothing. There was not even any empty space. Now this is a difficult concept to understand but it is vital in understanding the operation of my machine. This device causes a repetitive rift in the space-time continuum around this receiver or antenna. A small volume of space is compressed, causing the energy in that space to be directed into the machine. I will now show you the various components that make up the system. Obviously the main one is the zero point generator. I'll show it to you from all angles. At the front we have a special rotor. I'll explain its purpose a bit later. At the back we have the energy receiver or antenna. This is made from a very dense tungsten alloy. For the generator to work this has to be screwed down into the machine to make contact with the magnetic field inside. This is the electrical board which is connected to the generator. I'll show it to you from all angles again. There's nothing really special about it. Now this contains several modules. Firstly, one of these modules determines when there's sufficient power coming from the generator. It then turns on the other modules which convert the raw power into 240 volts electricity at this power point. I will now connect everything together. Firstly we place the generator on the board so that it doesn't go walk about when it's running. Now we plug in the connectors. We'll now need a load. For this purpose we're using these four 240 volt globes. They'll be connected in parallel to the lead and a plug. I'll plug it into the power point. Now the power point is on but the lights are off because the generator is not working. To start a generator we have to screw in the receiver then give it a manual turn. The generator will now speed up until it develops enough power to activate the modules and provide electricity. This generator will work indefinitely with no cost and no maintenance. I will now turn off the power point, unplug the lights and I will now plug in something that requires a bit more power. This domestic heater will do fine. Plug it in, turn the power point on, and I also need to turn on the switch on the heater. I'll set it to maximum, and there we go. This will now heat the home indefinitely. Now, you may have noticed that I turned the power point off a couple of times while the generator was working. This is not really recommended for an extended period of time. When a generator is working, we should always use the generated power. If there's no load, 
the generator power will simply start warming up the generator, it will overheat and eventually self-destruct. So if no power is required, we have to turn the generator off by removing its source of energy, which is the receiver. The generator will now stop. I'll now try to explain the operation of this device in a bit more detail. Basically it consists of two halves. At the back we have the energy receiver and motor. At the front and mounted on the same axle is the power generator. Now the main component of the motor is its central armature which consists of an intricate array of various sized neodymium magnets mounted radially in a precise Fibonacci sequence. During rotation this causes a repeated magnetization and demagnetization of a volume of space around this receiver antenna. Now magnetism as well as gravity will warp space and that's what happens at the receiver antenna. A tiny bit of space is repeatedly collapsed and then expanded at the frequency of rotation. Now during the collapsing phase the energy contained within a space has nowhere to go except through the receiver into the machine where it is dissipated as a turning force. Now this device is only possible because of the very precise arrangement of the magnets in the Fibonacci pattern. Now I can prove this and demonstrate the production of the space-time anomaly by doing a Fourier transform of the Fibonacci modified Gaussian fluctuations and then applying some serious mathematics. But that would be outside the scope of a simple presentation. Now rotation of the armature is what provides the energy transfer. Initially the armature is stationary so nothing can happen. So to start a process it is necessary to manually turn the armature by spinning the rotor. Then at every turn another pulse of energy goes into the machine and it begins to turn faster and faster until it reaches its optimum rotational speed. At this point there is more energy going in than is required to turn a machine. This excess energy can be channeled out through the generator part and converted into usable 240 volts electricity at the power point. Now one interesting factor is that all energy tries to escape. This is called entropy. Energy does not want to do any work and this is absolutely unavoidable. Therefore the energy pulses that go into the machine try to escape by the quickest possible route which is through the center of the machine and out through the front. If this is allowed to happen, the machine will not work because there will be no power to turn the armature. To solve this problem, I have fitted this rotor on the front. This contains two high strength magnets which during rotation creates an efficient magnetic shield which bounces the energy pulses back into the machine where they stay until they are used up as a rotational force. Now this machine is only a prototype. I built this to, to illustrate the operational principles. It will only put out a limited amount of power, but it is fully scalable. A 10 kilowatt machine can easily be built to power a whole house, or a mini megawatt machine to power a whole town. Now one point I mentioned earlier is that while a machine is working, it is always producing power and its power must be used. Therefore a typical household situation would have to incorporate a load monitoring system that would automatically switch in power wasting devices such as heat banks when the power requirements for the house were low. If this is not done, the unused energy will overheat the generator and eventually it will self-destruct. Well that's about it. We now have an unlimited supply of free energy.